You're welcome back. You're still watching Business Morning on Channels Television. Now, Nigeria's electricity supply is always something interesting that will catch attention because 45% of Nigerians still don't have access to grid eight years after privatization. While most of these unserved households dwell in rural areas, only 25% of rural households have access to the national grid. Urban electrification is equally unimpressive. I mean, was it last week or is it up to two weeks now? We had another collapse. That was the seventh or the eighth time. It uh, seems that we're losing count uh, for this year alone. Well, uh, even those with access are underserved. 78% of Nigerians receive less than 12 hours of electricity daily. Now, we've heard of some developments in that area, hoping that that is going to improve electricity supply. One of it is uh, there's a disco that now uses gas and supplies uh, electricity to Ayubo community. But we're going to dwell on that and find out some of those uh, mini grid impacts and projects uh, in that area. We have Noel Okredi, Senior Energy Analyst with STAIRS. Hi, Noel. Uh, good morning. Well, I think I should say congratulations too. Just spoke to your CEO on uh, your seed funding round, which is successful. Congratulations. And we hope to get more and larger data from you guys from now on. Yes, thank you so much. Definitely, you definitely will. All right, so tell us more about this uh, uh, gas-powered interconnected mini-grid. Uh, is it as complicated as it sounds, or is there a way to make it easier for us to understand? Yeah, so it's pretty simple. So we know that the national grid, the one that you just referred to that is always collapsing, is just uh, made up of generation, generation companies, transmission and distribution. The so generation companies have generators that they pass through wires, through the transmission and distribution and it gets to our houses. So mini grids are just are sim are the same thing really. There are generators that gener generate electricity through gas or solar, and then they pass through wires to people's homes. So that's essentially what a mini grid is. The difference is that a mini grid just has the capacity to, um, of one megawatt, which can power about roughly a thousand homes, while the grid, as you know, is on a much larger scale that can power millions of homes. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. All right, so a, a lot of us now do have alternative so other than the generator, petrol or diesel generators that we have in our homes, we also have alternative with solar. Is this part of that mini grid you're referring to? So no, so a mini grid can serve um, thousands of people, like I said, like at least a thousand people, while there are other um, solar alternatives. So there are solar mini grids, but there are other solar devices like inverters, um, solar home systems, these are much smaller that can just serve like maybe one house, one residence, one residence, one office, but mini grids can serve thousands of people. So they're ideal for small communities in rural and now like we're seeing in urban areas as well. So we know that uh, one of the discos uh, has already adopted this. Does it have to be a disco adopting it? Can maybe a private company adopt it and then maybe decide to serve and of course, of course, get paid, you know, maybe decide to choose a community and then have a mini grid, provide for that community and get paid. Definitely, the possibilities are limitless. So the reason why this particular um, company has partnered with the Disco is because the distribution company already has infrastructure in the area. So it doesn't make sense to construct your own infrastructure when there's existing infrastructure. So that's why they decided to partner with the Disco. But there are mini grids in rural areas with no infrastructure. There are even mini grids in areas with infrastructure where private companies decide to build their own lines, plant their own transformers, and serve certain communities. So you don't have to partner with the disco, but in this um, in this case, it was easy and cheaper for the company. Mm. So I know that uh, I know that the, the the conversation around constitution amendment is kind of sleeping now, mostly because of elections and campaigns and stuff. But one of those areas that was proposed for amendment is the area of electricity, where there's supposed to be freedom now for state governments and, you know, maybe private uh, 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 sector uh, participants 
to get into, because formerly, of course, there was a limit, even for states, you are not able to provide, I think, much more than a certain level of electricity to share or put in the grid. And, and the Constitution Amendment is supposed to deal with that. Do you see that bringing a change or boosting this mini-grid platform that we're talking about? Um, so, yes, definitely. Um, I think that the amendment to the Constitution is key, but at the same time, I don't think that it was such a huge blocker for the states in the first place. Because like we know, even the electricity sector, the national electricity sector with the discos, the main problem there is that people aren't paying. Not that they can't. So there are lots of issues, but the main, major issue is just that um, the revenue problem, that the discos aren't making enough money to pay the transmission companies and even pay the generation companies. So that has like kept the power sector in limbo. But with the new, um, with states being able to have their own electricity boards and their own um, electricity regulatory systems, their own grids, it's a good development, but it will be good to see how they also solve this challenge of revenue and payments and just all these issues that have plagued the national grid. And yeah, so it will be good to see how they solve those challenges, but it's a welcome development. I guess that any avenue through which Nigerians can get electricity is a good one. Yeah, but a lot of Nigerians, if you go out there to do a vox pop, you know, get the, the voice of the people, a lot of people seem to um, imply that the reluctance to pay is because there's no steady supply. So which one should come first, you know? So perhaps if Nigerians or maybe in a community, there's a there's steady supply, Revenue may not, I don't know for sure, <laughs> may not, you know, because it's the same thing with paying of tax. People ask, okay, you want me to pay tax? What is it being used for? What is it going to be used for? Who's held accountable and, and stuff like that? So perhaps if there's a steady supply, then Nigerians would not be reluctant to pay their tariff. Yeah, so it's a classic chicken and egg situation. On the one hand, the distribution companies need money to buy meters for people to um, improve their infrastructure so that they can supply electricity. On the other hand, people also need electricity so that they can pay for it because if you're not getting constant supply, then it just means that people are angry and they're less willing to pay. So we have two situations there and both of them are impacting the other. Um, some solutions have been to um, get um, funding from the government or from private sector or other sources since the power sector seems to be unable to generate revenue on its own. But those have been slow in implementation and also because the power sector is still on the way to fully cost reflective tariffs. So that just means that even private investors that might want to put their money in, because there's no path to profitability, they're a bit hesitant to do so. Um, so yeah, the revenue problem is a big one. and. The two, the two issues, so on the one hand, the issue where people aren't paying, and the other hand, where people aren't getting electricity, they are both related, and they just keep feeding into one another, and it just creates a vicious cycle in the end. Well, let's hope uh, with more companies, or more private sectors, or even more discos embracing mini-grid, and then we see uh, electricity supply more, people will be uh, more uh, uh, willing to pay and then the circle will surround. Well, thank you so much, Noel Lukredi, Senior Energy Analyst with STAIRS. Thank you. All right, um, power supply always a major one and uh, we'll keep talking about it and hope as uh, new plans and new innovations are being discovered and implemented, we'll bring it and perhaps you will embrace one of it and then you have one day, have 24 hours of uh, electricity supply in your home. But now let's take a break. Mm -hmm.